What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films and today I'm going to give you the verdict on my Sony a7S II versus GH5 uh, camera battle. Now I have some notes here so I don't forget anything. Uh, I've had them for about a month a piece together I mean. So I think I'm ready to give you guys uh, my opinion on who won between these two cameras. So the first thing I want to talk about is S-Log versus V-Log quality and dynamic range. Now, I think the GH5 won this by like a slightly, slightly, slightly uh, point because it's just, it has a little bit more dynamic range. Now, the Sony a7S II has a full frame sensor. So in some cases, some of the shots were sharper in a way, but I think the GH5 didn't do that bad. And I think I'm gonna give it to the GH5 with a uh, dynamic range because it is slightly better. Next thing I'm gonna go over is bokeh or depth of field. Now, I knew the Sony a7S II was going to win, so I'm gonna give it to the Sony a7S II because of its full frame sensor, but I don't think the GH5 did that bad considering of the price point of this camera and considering that the, it's a micro four thirds sensor. So Sony a7S II won bokeh and depth of field. Slow motion, I'm gonna have to give it to the GH5 just because of the HD 180 frames per second, 8-bit, which is crazy. All right, ease of use of the menus, they're pretty tied up. Uh, they were really easy to use. The menus are, I didn't even read the manuals for any of the cameras, and I was able to find the options I needed in the menus. They weren't that bad at all, so it's a tie between the two. I think the GH5 has a little bit more features. It has like vector scope and waveforms and whatnot, so I think I like the GH5 a little bit better because it has more options, but the menus, as far as far as menus go, they're pretty tied up. Battery life, I'm gonna have to give to the GH5 just because it is slightly bigger than the Sony a7S II. The Sony a7S II battery is a little bit smaller, so that's kind of cheating. So the GH5 gets battery life. Ergonomics and how the camera feels in my hand or how it felt in my hand, I'm gonna give it to the Sony a7S II because I have small hands and they did a good job um, as far as how comfortable it is in your hand. I mean, I can grip the Sony a7S II a lot better than the GH5 because the GH5 is a little bit bigger than the Sony a7S II. It just felt good uh, holding the Sony a7S II. You, you can have a really good grip on it. Okay, low light. <laughs> I did like three tests on this or two or three. It's obvious who wins this one is Sony a7S II is a freaking beast in low light. That's all I gotta say about that. But I don't think the GH5 did that bad, especially with a speed booster and Sigma 1835 at 1600 ISO. I think it's usable, but Sony a7S II is still the low light king, I think. Okay, so for stills, I tried it out. Um, I'm gonna have to give it to the GH5 because of the 20 megapixel. The Sony a7S II only has 12 megapixel. It is full frame but it's only 12 megapixel, so GH5 wins as far as stills go. I will compare the GH5 with an actual Canon full frame camera for stills, stay tuned for that. All right, so final thing is price point. The Sony a7S II right now still is about $2,700 body only, and the GH5 goes for $1,995, which is two grand. Obviously, I'm gonna go with a cheaper price because I think you just get more bang for your buck with a GH5 compared to the Sony a7S II. The Sony a7S II is still 8-bit. Um, maybe in the future, Sony can come up with like a Sony a9 or something and that would maybe be like 4K 10-bit or 1080p 10-bit uh, instead of 8-bit. Just kidding, they already did announce a Sony a9 and it's not 10-bit, but that's another topic. So, final thoughts, uh, I, had real, I had a lot of fun comparing these two cameras because they're up there. I mean, the price point is not that far from each other and it's supposed to be 4K for 4K as far as quality, 4K against 4K, GH5 having 10 bit and 150 mega bits per second, not megabytes, a lot of people get that confused. But I think the winner for me is the GH5 because it is cheaper and it has more features like 10K, uh, I mean not 10K, why do I always keep saying 10K? 4K 10-bit and in July, there's actually, there's gonna be a firmware update giving it a little bit more up to 400 mega, uh, megabits per second. So that's even gonna, that's gonna be awesome. But yeah, um, now I don't know what to compare the GH5 camera to. I'm thinking 
I don't know, an Ursa Mini 4.6K, but let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want me to compare this camera with other, any other cameras out there. Like always, thanks for watching. Peace out.